Hey, my name is Veronica of True Resource Bookkeeping, and today I'm going to walk through what vendors, customers, and accounts are in QuickBooks Online. This is something that can be really challenging for people to get at first and not knowing the difference and kind of when to use one versus the other and how to use them can make things a little bit messy later on. So I'm going to explain to you what each of them are and I'm going to explain also, you know, when you might see them, for example, in the bank feed or doing a journal and how you can make sure that you have the best choice for each transaction so that you have super clear books down the line. So let's get started. Who or what is a vendor? A vendor is a person or organization that you pay for products or services. So an example of this is, you know, if I pay for advertising help from Facebook or Google ads, then Facebook or Google ads would be a vendor because I'm paying them for service. Or if I purchase business cards from Vistaprint, Vistaprint would be a vendor. So the key to remember here is vendors are people who you pay for products or services. All right, so what about customers? Customers are kind of the opposite of vendors. A customer is a person or organization that pays you for products or services. So if I sell my services to Jane Doe, then Jane Doe would be a customer. If I make a sale through Stripe for products or services, and then Stripe sends me the money, the funds, from those sales, then Stripe is a customer. The key with customers to remember is that a customer is a person or organization that pays you for products or services. Okay, so we've gone over what vendors are, what customers are. So now, what are accounts? Accounts are categories that QuickBooks Online uses to track expenses, income, assets, liabilities, and equity. I'm going to spend a little bit of time going over some examples of each of these five account types. So first expenses. So expenses are generally money that you're spending for something. So it could be for advertising, office supplies, continuing education. Those are all examples of expense types of accounts. What about income? So income is any money that you receive from customers for goods or services. So you could have, you know, if you did copywriting, you could have copywriting income. If you did um, consulting, consulting income, or you could just have plain income. And assets. So assets are what your business owns. So it could be a bank account, so cash in your bank account. It could be accounts receivable, so the money that you're expecting to come after you invoice a client. Those would be examples of asset account types. And liabilities. Liabilities are money you owe, so it could be a credit card account that you have or a loan that you have to pay back. Those are both examples of liabilities account types. And finally, equity. So equity is kind of the difference between assets and liabilities. So if you were a sole proprietor or maybe an LLC as a single member LLC, uh, an equity account could be, you know, the owner's contribution. So what the owner puts into the to business, or it could be owner's pay and personal expenses as an account, um, what the owner pays themselves, you know, and any personal expenses that they have that go to the, to the owner. So these are all just examples of different types of accounts within the different types of account groups. All right, so just to recap really briefly, we went over what vendors are, which remember vendors are a person or organization that you pay for products or services. Then we talked about customers and a customer is a person or organization that pays you for products or services. And then we talked about accounts. 
and accounts are categories that QuickBooks Online uses to track expenses, income, assets, liabilities, and equity. All right, so now that you are a pro and know the difference between customers and vendors and understand what the different accounts are, I'm gonna just show you a few places in QuickBooks Online where you're gonna actually get to use those and it helps to know the difference. So the first page would be the bank feed. So you'll go to banking and then banking, and then you'll choose, you know, whatever card or bank account you are choosing to um, categorize in the moment. And you'll just click one open and here you will see one field for both vendor and customer because as you probably know, the bank feed can pull in either expenses or income. So here is where sometimes it gets confusing because you're not sure which one to put. But if you remember from our earlier demonstration, vendors are either people or organizations that you pay or customers are people or organizations that pay you. So here, in for this example, this is money that came in from Amazon. It's probably not the best example, but because Amazon probably isn't the customer, but maybe it is. Um, but say it was, you know, then you would know that you were choosing somebody that's a customer. And if it didn't exist, in this case, Amazon doesn't exist in here, and you're assured that Amazon is a customer, you would add a new one from the bank feed and make sure that you just chose customer in this drop down menu. And then vice versa, if there was money that went out, in this case, Laura's lamination, um, you would make sure that you chose either from the list, you would see is does that person, that does that vendor exist? Because this is a vendor. So Lara doesn't exist. So you would just add the full name and you'd make sure that vendor was chosen. So that's one place, a big place, probably the most frequent place that you will see knowing the difference between vendor and customer come into play and being very helpful to know the difference. And then the second area is category which is another word that QuickBooks uses to reflect the accounts that you would choose that we talked about. Remember, there was an like expense account, income account, all the assets or liabilities or um, equity accounts. So when you click this drop down, that's gonna pull up the whole list of different types. So they have expenses in here. Um, there's a bank account, which remember is an asset account, other assets, liabilities. Um, the credit card was also liability, equity, and then income. So it really helps to understand the difference between those because you're going to either be choosing one that already exists. So in this case, this money going out, so it probably was an expense, so you know it'd be in this top section. Um, or if it doesn't exist, you would have to add it. So it helps to know, you know, oh, this is an expense, let me add it. And then once this box popped up, pops open, you can know like, okay, it's an expense. So I have to make sure that I change the account type to be expense. So you gotta go searching for it, it's at the bottom expense you change the detail type to be more specific to what it is and then you know you would add the name of the expense and you'd save it so again this bank feed page is really really helpful for you to know the difference between the vendors versus customers and the accounts and the account types um, and it'll really help you make things so much more clear and easy to understand down the line the second area where you might come into play with having to know the difference and having to choose would be expense. So if you're manually adding an expense and it's, you know, you wanna add it before it comes through the bank feed so that you can match, um, or maybe it just didn't and you need to add the expense manually, you would go here. And instead of vendor, you'll see it says payee, which is just another word of like, who are we paying? So here is where you would add the vendor. It already kind of defaults to vendor, but you'll see that there's also customers that show up in this list because you probably could send money to a customer, like say if you had to refund them or something, but it helps to know where if you need to add a new person, it's gonna be a vendor and similar, except more detailed, it opens up and it asks you what you want, what type, and we wanna do a vendor, it defaults to that. So that's helpful there. And then also down here, there's gonna be an opportunity for you to add the category, which again, remember, is what QuickBooks is also calling the account. So here, like on the bank feed, similar, it's a list you can either pull from with all the expenses and the income and the liabilities and the assets, and you can choose one or add one. Um, another area that might 
be used that will, you need to know the difference between all of these things that we're talking about is invoicing. So if you use QuickBooks invoice, remember this is to get money that people will pay you. So if you already guessed it, we're dealing with customers here. So at the top, it says customer and you'll choose the customer or if you need to add it, you will add it and it pops up another button and it just defaults to customer. You can't actually make a vendor payment or vendor this way. You would never invoice a vendor. So that's why it kind of defaults to not allowing you to. Um, and in a different way than expenses, you don't explicitly or you don't directly choose the, um, the account, the income account. Instead, you reference the product or service that you previously set up, um, which is again, another place where you'll have to know the accounts. And I just kind of popped open this page and here's the product and services. And here's where you would tell it which income account to use. And again, it does have everything showing up, but really it'd be the income account. So again, these aren't all the areas where you would have to um, know the difference between you know, vendors and customers and accounts and account types, but these are kind of the most popular ones, especially the bank feed. So just make sure that you, know, you play around with it and now um, you know the difference and, and you'll end the year with cleaner books, clearer books, and you won't mix up all of the different types of accounts or the customer and vendor won't be mixed up. So I hope this was helpful. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions and if you have a more specific question and you need an extra kind of specific detailed kind of one-on-one -on -one support, definitely feel free to reach out to me. You can visit my website, trueresourcebookkeeping.com and I would love to talk to you. I would love to help you. So reach out to me there. And so, yeah, I hope that this was helpful and just remember, just take it one breath at a time, one click at a time, and that's really all it takes to take care of your books. So you've got this, keep going, and I will see you next time. Bye.